Good morning. Um, we are Mark and Willy. We work at Development Seed and as, a, as software engineers. And our talk is about uh, how to scale up the OSM validation using uh, a new pipeline um, built for SMCHAR. So who here knows what is SMCHAR? Lots of people. Um, so what most people know about SMCHA is the, the web view, the web app that you can use to filter chain sets on OpenStreetMap. You can visualize the chain sets and review it, uh, adding a good or bad score for, for each chain set, and post comments. Uh, it's a very nice interface to visualize chain sets and uh, probably the, one of the best uh, ways to find the chain sets that matter to you, to, that impacts the area that you like to map, uh, or communities that uh, you care about. But there is much more about it that people real, uh, generally don't know. That is uh, what's behind it, what powers uh, OSMCHA. And it's a data pipeline. Uh, we have lots of service processing OSM data uh, on every minute and that data, I the, the results of that process is available to the OSM community. Uh, the main service are the OSM chat whatbot, that is what ingests the chain set from the OSM replication files and put it on the OSM chat database so we, we can search and uh, see all the information uh, about the chain sets. And the OSM IDF service that combines the replication files and the data from overpass about each chain set. And it puts more information on, on the database as well and generates the real chain sets uh, files that I, I will explain uh, later. So the main results are the OSM API in the real chain sets S3 that you can use to um, yeah, to have access to, to chain set data. And it's also an uh, OpenStreetMap US char charter project since last year. Um, with that, or, uh, organizations and people can donate money to support the same char. Uh, for example, Meta uh, supported the migration from the Mapbox infra infrastructure to our OSM, OSM US infrastructure. And it's all open source, uh, all, all the code that of the service that run behind the char and the code that we, we use to deploy it, it's all open source now. Uh, after that migration work that we have made, we have done with uh, the support of SEM US and Meta. So what comes out of that pipeline? The first is the OSMCHA API that you can use to access chain set information, can make filters, uh, everything that's available on the web interface can be accessed by the API. And there is another function that is to add uh, quality assurance flags to the chain sets. So we associate uh, potential bad features in, uh, with the, the chain sets that created them. For example, Mapbox uses it uh, after some the some crew members from Mapbox are reviewing chain sets uh, every day, and what they consider potentially bad, they uh, use the API to input that information, and make it available to the community, so the community can review it and fix the problems. And so, if you want to use uh, like that API, you can use it to input more data to SMCHA or just keep uh, it private as well if, if you don't want to, uh, to use, uh, to, to make it public. And the other one is the real chain sets. Uh, it's a, a representation of the chain set in a JSON format. It contains all the, all the features that were created modified or deleted in the chain set, uh, and also the previous version. So you can see here the, the old one. So it has all the metadata, all the geometry. In that case, it's a simple geometry because it's a node. 
uh, but we have relations ways as well. And it's more compact than a JSON, uh, GeoJSON, but we have a library to convert it to GeoJSON. Um, it's used on the visualization of the chain set on SMCHAR, and it's available for free on the on AWS S3 buckets. We have a SNS topic as well, so you, you get notifications when each uh, the new files are created, and it's supported by the AWS Open Data Program. Uh, some examples of tools that uh, we use to that use that pipeline. The first one is was created some years ago. Uh, it's not working anymore, but if, one, if someone wants to adopt it and uh, run it again, it's the code is available. It's the same compare. It reads each uh, real chain set. It it iterates over each feature and runs some checks. Like for example, that code is just searching for hair or critical features created. Like for example, if someone creates a new country or a new continent, uh, it adds a flag on, on SMCHAR. So we can uh, see it and find it more easily and fix it. Uh, we have, for example, the example of the tech change that is uh, like it's very uh, expensive to have a database of the same features. So we found a way, a, a more simple and low cost way to be able to carry chain sets by, by OSM tags uh, without storing everything. Uh, so it also reads the chain set files um, and make like a list of the most relevant OSM tags that were created, modified or deleted on the chain set. So we can visualize it and search it by it. And Mark will talk about gradient. Hey, everyone. Uh, so gradients, um, a project that really uses that, pli that pipeline. We came up with the idea last year when we were looking at uh, all sorts of uh, multidimensional uh, file formats for uh, geospatial data. And uh, basically, we were thinking, what if we could store all of OSM indexed by time? And, and space. Um, and so this is the perfect implementation of something like this. And I'll show you a demo uh, real quickly. Uh, we can take the hourly replication files that Willie was talking about, see all the change sets that are in a single hour, and then uh, go and grab all the real change sets from the OSM Chai API. And now we have all the geometries within one hour and then we could deliver them to the browser. And this is really useful if you want to know if I have a bounding box, what happened in a certain time frame. And you could just grab all the data from that time slice. Now, you can do this in all sorts of ways, but we uh, took those hourly files and we packed them into something called a flat geo buff. If anyone knows about flat geo buff, it's an efficient file format that you can put on a cloud bucket somewhere. And you don't need a server. You could just do range requests. Um, if you saw PM tiles uh, yesterday, it's very similar. But instead of a render format, you're grabbing all the data, all the GeoJSON information. And you can just access a time slice from, from a bucket. So let me see if I can just show you this demo. So this is this is gradient. Uh, so it's all geometries within uh, one hour of this date, and you could see user stats, you could see tag stats, and you could see what's changed, and. It's pretty fast. Hopefully, you know, it's a live demo, so let's see if it will work. But we could do the entire US and we'll just load all the GeoJSON. It's the bounding box that we're just seeing right now. There we go. 
and then you could just skip to the next hour. And it will load the rest. And that's really fast. These are all GeoJSON, by the way. It's not just the point data. Um, I don't know if I have a lot of time, but let's go to Europe. See what happens. Usually map a lot more in Europe. There we go. And then just skip an hour. It can seem it's low, but probably it's the fastest way to see all the chains in one hour in a continent. Uh, yeah. Um, let, let me just get to the rest of the talk, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you could play around with this. It's slower than it was uh, uh, yesterday, but uh, <laughs> you, can, you can try it on the university Wi-Fi. It's pretty fast. Um, so that's gradient. Like I said, all geometries and uh, index per hour, right? And you can just grab that from the bucket. We store it. If you want access to it, we'll just give you access. And this is the perfect res representation of this new OSM Cha API, right? You can build your own app. We're storing all the real change sets, and you can create user filters, time filters, whatever you'd like. If you have any ideas of what you can build, we're available to help. Uh, hopefully, this inspired you in some way. And uh, yeah, just reach out to us in the conference or email us. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Go ahead. The AP, the OSM Chai API. Yeah, I mean. I think using the OSM Chai API directly maybe could be easier for automation scripts um, because Gradient is more of a tax stats tool, I, I, I would say. Um, but yeah, if you're monitoring a particular area, you can just keep loading it and see if there's anything like that's very glaring. Uh, one thing that we saw, we were playing around with it yesterday, and we saw a lot of bot edits. And they're very, uh, they're very prominent. You could see them over time. You could see bot edits uh, doing very specific modifications in a clustered area. Like if you see in one hour a huge area being modified, you, you'd be suspicious. 